long ago, there was a man who wanted to 3D print miniatures on his FDM printer for his D&D games. His prints were good, but still left a bit to be desired. That is, until he discovered Holy Grail. A new $200 3D printer and the perfect settings. Yes, yes, have hope, fellow printers. Because I am so excited to share with you how you can get this quality print on your FDM printers. Let's do it. Hi there, I am Danny, the 3D Printing DM. Welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop. If you're new to my channel, or new to 3D printing, or D&D, or whatever games you're playing that you're interested in checking out what I'm doing here, I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Today, I'm excited to share some of the secrets of getting very high quality prints on your FDM printer. Before we begin, in this video, I'm gonna show a lot of minis up close that I've printed over the past two weeks. And I have to say a few things about them. The first is that some of you might see these minis and say, eh, I can definitely print better than that on my resin printer. You're probably right. This video isn't meant to be a statement that, oh, FDM printer is coming for the resin printer. <laughs> the resin is still king when it comes to detail, but this video is meant to show that, yes, you can get smooth, very high quality detail mini prints on your FDM printer, for those who can't afford a resin printer or for those who are just starting and want to buy a cheap $200 printer like this one, the Creality Ender 3. All of these minis were printed on this printer, so keep that in mind throughout the video today. I've printed every kind of mini here today, every pose I could find, uh, every genre, with base, without base, different levels of detail, different scales, and I did that because I didn't want anybody saying, oh, but what about this type? Oh, but no, but you missed this type. Oh, no, but this. No, I, I literally tested this printer and these settings with all of these minis and tried different things with it throughout it. So I did that because I want to show that this affordable $200 printer is capable of these results. Not just this printer, but really any FDM printer because these settings work for a lot more than just the Ender 3. But this printer, $200 with no upgrades, stock nozzle, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, was able to do this. And I'm confident that a good majority of FDM printers are capable of doing this too with the right tweaks to your settings. Another thing that I want to say is that a few of these were printed at a 0.08 millimeter layer height. <clears throat> Once I tried 0.05 millimeters on my stock nozzle and saw I could do it, uh, I kept it and it makes a huge difference. Um, I'll talk more about this a little bit later. Of course this big guy, the Earth Elemental, he was printed uh, at 0.12 millimeter layer height. Now you did hear that right, I was able to print these minis with the stock nozzle at 0.05, um, which I would say is a testament to this printer more than anything. But there are other printers that can print at the at 0.05 millimeter layer height uh, with stock nozzle too. So I'm doing this video also to show, to clarify a common misconception, and that's that you need a really expensive printer to be able to get quality from your prints. That simply isn't true. Uh, most FDM printers are capable of similar tolerances, and it's the settings that make these prints what they are. And throughout the video, I'll show you prints from other people on different printers to show you that it isn't just this printer. This machine though has been a big difference for me because I've been able to get better prints out of the Ender 3 than I have my CR10, but I know people have gotten this quality on their CR10 as well, as you can see on the screen. Other misconceptions that people think you need mods for this quality of print, this is stock. I have no upgraded nozzle, no upgraded fans, no nothing. This is literally just out the box and I started printing this as my test. Um, as part of a review video that I'm doing for this printer. Um, all those things, all those extra upgrades are nice, but they're not necessary. And you don't need to spend months of trying different settings. You can start with the baseline that I'm gonna share in this video. I didn't use any fancy tools for cleanup either. Uh, you know, it was literally just cut off the supports, you know, maybe every occasionally using some filing on some of the areas that were sticking out, but not that much necessary. It looked, the supports make it look uglier than it was, right? But then I take it all off. I did a simple coat of gray primer and that was it. Uh, nothing fancy, you guys. I don't say this big intro part to boast or to brag. I wanna make that clear because I really can't take credit for this setting, for this profile. Biggest factor in my success 
was the settings I used, and a big chunk of those settings came from a user on Reddit called SciPy. That's literally why if you go on my website and you find and you download the profile, you'll see that the author is SciPy, uh, because I don't want to take credit for this. I, I just did some minor tweaks that I don't think were that big of a deal. But the secret to this, which I'll share later, was definitely their idea. <laughs> I want them to get the credit for it, even though I might be sharing it with you. Also, when I say my profile, I'm not literally meaning my brainchild. I just mean the profile that I used for these minis. And it's just a little bit quicker than saying the profile settings that seep that SciPy gave me, right? Now, before I decided to make this profile, something interesting happened. When I started to share my print results on Facebook and on Reddit, a lot of people started asking me for the settings. And in an effort to make it easy for them, I just put my profile online on my website, 3dprintedtabletop.com. And I asked people to share their results with me so I could see what type of, if this was working for them too. And uh, little by little, I started to see people post their pictures of what they were getting. And it was the same as me. <laughs> I was, I was like, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's amazing. I realized this wasn't a fluke. This wasn't me getting lucky. I wasn't one in a million. The settings just work. It's the settings, it's not me. And the fact that these settings ended up being reproducible gives me the confidence to be able to share them with you, with people that are new, that might think, oh gosh, I'll never get the settings to get my prints like that. And the answer is, yeah, you can. If you have an Ender 3 or pretty much any Creality printer, you can download the profile that I have and just pop it in and print your minis. And there's a good chance you'll end up with something similar to these. So I talked a lot about this printer already, and I don't want to talk too much about this because this isn't an Ender 3 video. So now the real question, how did I get these results? How can you get these results? What do you need to do to your settings if you don't have an Ender 3 or an Ender 2 or a Creality family printer? In order for you to really understand why this profile works, I have to go over some settings. I have to explain some of the intricacies and the weird things about this profile because you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, what the? I don't get this. And those of you who are really happy with your mini quality, you're probably doing a lot of these already. But this video is also meant for people who are new or are struggling. Frankly, there are, there's going to be a lot of things that can affect your print quality. And I'm just boiling this down to the very core settings that I think are going to make the biggest difference regardless of what printer you're using. I want this to be a pretty much printer agnostic video because if you're using Ender 3, you can just download my profile and have it and you don't even need to worry about it. But I'm assuming you still want to see to figure out what's the magic sauce. <laughs> so the first step is 100% infill, but there's a catch. And I'm not sure why this is the case, but if you go to Cura and you set top layers to an infinite number, nine, 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 and you set the bottom layers to zero, you end up tricking Cura into thinking that every layer is a top layer to treat it with that same level of detail. It just, it just works. I don't know why. Uh, it works better than 100% infill for me on Cura. <laughs> And I've tried on Simplify 3D and hasn't made a difference for me on Simplify 3D. But on Cura, it's made a difference. And I get better mini prints, better mini finishes off Cura for some reason. So I use Cura for my minis. And I'm definitely not an engineer. It's just, <laughs> this is what works, you guys. This is pretty much the number one magic sauce of this profile. And you've got to try this if you haven't already. So when you see it in the profile, know this is intentional and should not be changed. Number two is layer height. Now in the profile, the layer height is set to 0.08 millimeters because I wanted this to be pretty beginner friendly. Uh, I want to say that some of these prints that were printed at 0.08 are still much better quality than my CR10 prints, but the ones that you are looking at that look layerless were printed at 0.05 millimeters like I'd mentioned. I printed this with the stock nozzle. You should definitely search for your printer's uh, stepper motors magic numbers is what the term is uh, for the CR10 and Ender 3, the Creality family, it's 0.04. So 0.05 really wasn't the magic number. It should have been 0.04. But for some reason, 0.05 worked better for me than 0.04. So I stuck with it and I just used it. Now, fair warning, this does significantly increase your print time. It's one of the cons of this profile. And it's one of the things that I'm really trying to work on as quickly as possible to fix because Having such a small layer height takes a lot longer with an FDM printer. It, you know, your three hour mini can go to six hours, for example. And that's a little too long for some people. Um, I liked my results, so I ended up not, not, it doesn't bother me as much. Other people really like really quick prints. So this is one of those cons that I just have to be upfront about. 
Um, and if there's a profile that you find that gives you better results for a lot less time, it's worth trying, honestly. <laughs> I, I won't judge you if you do that. <laughs> Again, for the detail, I, I think it's worth it. The third step is to slow the print down. Okay, there's some people that use Acura's like adaptive layer heights and things like that. At the end of the day, what I think gets the best results is a print speed between 20 to 25 millimeters per second. And depending on what type of material you use, um, it running slow will allow the print to cool. And that's why it leaves a better product at the end of the day. Some people use multiple prints and it allow it time to cool. Uh, you increase the risk of stringing if you do that. And so some people don't like that either, but either way with support settings, I get stringing all the time. So that might not be that big of a deal. But um, you really want to run the printer slower. It's one of the keys, no matter what, to any print that you're doing to get better minis, uh, regardless. The fourth thing I want to talk about is set is supports. I use uh, Cura's regular support settings, which a lot of people don't like because Cura is famous for creating these really difficult to remove supports, which can be true. Uh, I've kind of learned how to work with them. And I think having my print at 100 infill feels stronger to me than having my print with 20 or 30 or 40% infill. And at least for me, I feel like the quality is better. So uh, with those supports a little bit higher and when I'm printing at the lower layer height of 0.05, um, they're thinner layers and it's easier to kind of crumble with my, with my pliers. So it's not as difficult for me. Uh, some people still don't like it and they try different types of supports like tree supports. That's okay too. Um, I like to use zigzag and I recently been using a setting at the bottom that kind of connects the zigzags. It creates this tree support uh, like connection that you can kind of remove, but it doesn't obscure the whole print like tree supports do. I just like it more. Some people love tree supports and they use it and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I don't have supports automatically enabled, I don't think on the profile, but uh, that's what I use, zigzag supports. And yeah, pretty much it. Uh, but the other thing I will I, I will warn again, there's a con, there's always cons and trade-offs like I mentioned all the time. The trade-off to using Cura supports as opposed to generating supports in any other type of profile or any other type of system like Mesh Mixer or something like that is that you're having difficult to remove supports. You're going to get, um, you know, the, the objects that it's spinning over are going to be really uh, well supported. So you're not going to get failure in that sense, but there's going to be a lot more artifacts. So you can see on some of these that there's a little bit more artifact than I'd care to admit. Uh, but um, that's just one of the, one of the trade-offs when it comes to this. And I'm trying to make supports easier to remove without losing that support and that quality that, that I'm expecting out of these out of these minis. The other con about this is that with supports, you're going to get stringing. Uh, these models look very ugly coming off the build plate, and that's not good for some people. Um, once you peel it off layer by layer, um, this is the finish. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't mind it. As long as it looks ugly before, I don't really care. It takes maybe 5 to 15 minutes to, to clean it up. It's really not that bad, and I end up spending that much time with my Reaper bones to clean off mold lines and things of that nature. So I think about it like the mold lines of the print. Um, once I prime them, even before I prime them, they have that same quality anyways, without feeling so soft. Um, so, hey, I'm, I'm happy with that. But just fair warning in case you're like, oh my gosh, my print looks so ugly. Once you start cleaning it off, you'll understand, um, has actually a pretty good finish without as much artifact. Um, that's difficult to work with per se. It's just been my experience, at least and the experience that a lot of the people that I've talked to that have used this profile. And finally, the last step is orientation. Uh, a lot of people have questions about orientation. How do I orient my mini? And a mini with a cape might uh, be better suited to be angled at 45 degrees on his back, like you might see in Mesh Mixer or with a resin print. Um, and the reason is because there's less artifact on the cape itself, on the back. You know, the waves of cape and the bottom of capes are notoriously difficult when it comes to printing minis. And so you want to consider things like that. Uh, you want to consider whether it's going to be easier to remove the supports from, from the bottom because you left the base on. Or you're going to want to consider whether you remove the base. You know, I've seen prints work better each way. For me, just to be lazy and to be consistent, after the first couple prints at an angle, if I got a little bit of base failure, I just stopped printing that way. Um, zigzag supports at an angle was fine. But um, just as an example, I, I did different things. I tried what worked for me, and each mini ended up being a little bit different. But for the most part, uh, it didn't affect print quality. The good thing is that with these prints, if something doesn't work out and you want to print it again and try in a different orientation, you're talking eight cents. So 
Six to eight cents for one of these minis is a negligible cost in my opinion. It's like a resin print. We have where it costs 50 cents or one or two dollars depending on how efficient you are with the resin. Uh, it's definitely doable and it's just quick to print in another orientation if it doesn't work out for you. In short though, I really didn't notice much of a difference in quality when it came to the angle, so I don't think that the orientation really matters as much for this profile. So that's it you guys, those are pretty much the, the basic aspects of this, of this profile and I think of printing minis in general. Um, some people have gotten really good success without using all of these, and that's awesome. This is very much a kind of beginner's profile that's meant to be very beginner friendly because things like the 100% infill some people might feel like is unnecessary and adds extra time, but that's okay. Uh, I want people to just be able to plug this in as they learn what they're doing and learn what's happening. It's really not that much extra filament, and it's a couple of hours extra, sure, but um, you know, as time goes on, you'll start to learn what settings you can play with and customize this for your needs and for your specific printer. The other thing I want to say is that um, this profile isn't generally plug and play. You'll still have to think about filaments, uh, temperature, what temperature prints best. Sometimes it's cooler, sometimes it's hotter. For the most part, uh, enough people have had this work for them that I'm sticking with it, okay? And just for the sake of this, if anybody is wondering, I used Hatchbox White PLA. It's just the filament that I used. You know, why do I spend a lot of this video talking about profile and so on and so forth? I'm doing this because one of my goals with this channel is to provide value and to provide resources that'll make it easier for people who are transitioning into this hobby or learning this hobby get started and, and learn what's going on. And if you buy a 3D printer for minis and terrain specifically, which with the Ender 3 now, I think we're going to see a lot more people joining the hobby because it's so affordable and because the trade-offs aren't as much as some of the other printers up have, have had up until this point. I want uh, there to be more resources in the community for people to just download the profile and print, at least until they find a better profile or until they start learning uh, the ins and outs of the profile so they can start figuring things out on their own. That's really what I want to do and I want you to be encouraged and try to, try to get good results pretty quickly instead of have to wait months like happened to me when I started. So I'm passing on along the SciPy profile to you as well. I think you'll find it's a really good start. It's not a perfect profile by any means. Some folks have been able to get this quality on their first print and other people haven't. Uh, and that's why I say a profile is never a end, end all be all solution for everybody. But it's usually a good place to start if that's the case. For a lot of the people who downloaded the profile and used it and allowed me to share it with you in this video, this was their first 3D printer. So I know that you don't have to be an expert to be able to get quality prints out of your printer. Like I said, I think I proved that you don't need a super expensive printer to be able to do this. The technology is pretty amazing and we're getting to an amazing tipping point, I think, with where we're at. And there's still cons to 3D printing, don't get me wrong, this is by no means a perfect printer. But we're making strides and I think us as a community are figuring this out, how to make this work for us until we can get resin technology and until resin printers can become this cheap, like $200 for this much value and this big of a build plate, for example. And until resin comes out in cost too, to make the actual material itself a little bit more affordable. Also, the, the fact that this is reproducible gives me the confidence to be able to share this with you guys. I've been waiting to have something that I can feel confident sharing, saying, hey, I've gotten these results, other people have gotten these results. I think you can too. Uh, it's why I've hesitated so long and because I haven't been confident in my results. Until now, I am very happy with these results and I think that you'll be happy too once you print uh, your own minis and give this a shot as well. If you do come across another profile that you wanna try, I encourage you to. Uh, when I first got my CR10, I tried several profiles and found the one that worked for me and then eventually I started tweaking it to what it worked for me and it made me a lot more comfortable. It was my start and I want that for you too if you are new to 3D printing. The community tends to move very fast. So, you know, since the Ender 3 has been popping up and people have been printing minis, people are tweaking their own settings and sharing and I'm one of those people but other people have their own and they're working great and sometimes better. In some ways better than the profile that I share with you today. Um, I'm speaking of my experience. So, for example, my friend, Leo, he's got a profile that he's working on. It's an experimental profile, but he's getting quality prints that are as good as mine for half the print speed, you know, half the time to print with the same level of detail with 20% infill. And, you know, he's a wizard as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going to try his... I'm gonna try his profile. If it works for me, I'm either gonna tweak my profile or start using his and then make the tweaks I need for my printer. Uh, that's what this is about, you guys. It's about community. This isn't a, 
this isn't about me. We are here, the 3D printing community and this tabletop community I think is coming together at this point. And I wanted to continue to grow together with those of you who are new. Um, and I think we can do this. And I, you know, I, I want this to be a tipping point. And I want us to be able to, again, start to share and build our knowledge and help push the, the technology to its limit, I think, which we still have some work to do. Even though people say there's been limitations, I don't think we've imagined being able to do this on this scale this repeatedly for a $200 machine. I am really just trying my best to give you something to work with and uh, share how I got the results in these videos, which is, which is what I do. I'm not by any means saying it's the best. Uh, there's usually multiple ways to get this quality print. So don't be discouraged if my profile doesn't work or if you don't really like my profile and want to try somebody else's, okay? Um, go for it. Give it a shot. I want you to get awesome results and I think profiles are a pretty quick and easy way to give that a shot and make it more likely to happen. If you are looking at this and saying, hey, I need one. I'm ready to make the leap. I'm ready to buy my first printer. I'm ready to buy my second printer. Um, check out the links below. I want to thank everybody who's given me feedback on this profile so far, both good and bad, what you like, what you don't like about it, uh, for, con for your contributions uh, to the, the follow-up versions. I am going to keep updating this profile or sharing with you better ones. I have no problem doing that. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing that through Facebook and uh, through my website, 3dprintedtabletop.com. I appreciate all those of you who've allowed me to share your results with the community too. And I think it's gonna be something they'll appreciate seeing other people besides me getting results like this. So thank you. That's all for today, folks. Uh, I know this video went a little bit longer than I expected, but there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about because this isn't exactly uh, I want this to be as easy as possible, but there's a lot of things that could happen. And I want you to get as good results as possible. And I want us to kind of uh, collectively level up as a community uh, and kind of take our mini FDM printing to the next level until we can afford the high quality of an SLA or a DLP resin printer, uh, which definitely is the ideal option for this. But until then, I hope that you get uh, this quality level of quality with the help of this video and some of the things that you learned in here. And uh, I appreciate you being here and I wish you happy gaming and happy printing. Take care.